Welcome to the finance meeting for uh, June 8th. Uh, uh, to take up the budget, uh, Madam Clerk, item number one. City Clerk, Anthony Zioli, Clerk. Good evening, Mr. Clerk. Any Good statement? Evening. Uh, Do you have any statement or just questions? No, I think that the, uh, <clears throat> the budget reflects the needs of the department. Any questions? Councilor Sullivan. Uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, you know, 11 years ago, five of us came on as new councilors, and this year we have quite a few new councilors. So thank you for your guidance and your leadership on that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank Mr. You, Chairman. Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Item number two. City Council, Anthony Zioli Clark. Uh, any statement? Same thing. Reflects the needs <laughs> of the department. <laughs> any questions, councillors? Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. I Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Item number three. Elections Commission, John McGeary, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. McGeary. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Any statement? No, councillor. Uh, the numbers are about the same with the exception of um, the negotiator raises and... Um, the fact that we do have a few more election dates this year than we've had in the past. So. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Sullivan. Again, I don't have a question. John, I just want to thank <laughs> you with the special elections. You know, you and your staff and, and the, the people that actually work for polls, I think it was flawless this year, which was a great thing. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank Councillor. Councillor. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, councillors. Good evening. Item number four. Retirement, contributory, William Farmer, Chairman. Good evening. Um, I'm Hal Hanna, not Bill Farmer. Uh, Bill, the Chairman, is uh, unable to attend tonight. Uh, I'd like to get away with what Tony did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you should have before you the letter that I receive annually from PARAC in November of each year we're requiring a certain amount be appropriated by the member units and paid over to the retirement system as part of their obligation. Uh, this year the the bill for the city uh, is eighteen million six hundred and seventy three thousand four hundred and twelve dollars and you can see the other member units their share too but they're smaller units. We, we were formed for the city of Brockton. Councillors? All set? Thank you very much, Mr. Hannon. Thank you. Item number five. License Commission, Henry Tatalia, Chairman. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening, Mr. Tatalia. Uh, the revenue for the License Commission was 326990 Payout was 95373 and there were 667 licenses issued. Thank you, Mr. Talia. Questions? Uh, I just want to make a statement. Thank you for your uh, work. Uh, the, the concert the other night uh, went pretty well, and I thank the License Commission for staying on top of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six. Weights and measures. Mark Coyne, Sailor. Good evening, Mr. Coyne. Good evening, Councillors. You're getting up there. How many budgets for you is this? Thirty-three. You started when you were four. <laughs> That's what I'd like to say, yes. <laughs> um, other than any increase, negotiated increases in uh, contract salaries, um, the, the budget's pretty well level funded from last year. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Coyne. Thank, thank you. Information, into, uh, excuse me, item number seven. Information Technology, William Santos, Acting Director. Good evening, Mr. Santos. Good evening, Councillors. Um, I just have a brief statement. I'd just like to thank everybody on the IT team. I'd also, uh, I've worked with a lot of departments this year, so I'd like to thank the Mayor, Police, Fire, the building department, uh, all of DPW, the parking authority, and the school department for helping us get the citywide projects completed. And I'd like to 
point out just two. Uh, in personal services, there are a couple of items that are just contractual uh, mm -hmm. obligations, except for uh, one uh, in the personal service full time. That is up 75,000, and that's a system analyst for a DPW support specialist. And in the capital projects is an increase of 20,000 to add storage to a server for the assessor's office. Uh, take any questions. Council Burns. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Um, are there any plans to fill the vacancy that's funded and to um, your acting director, correct? Acting, yes. Okay. Yeah. Any plans on, on yeah, that staffing uh, issue? There's really not a position for the um, for the director. Um, as long as I've been around uh, for 18 years, there's never been a director. Um, it's always been an acting director, and I think it just need it would have to be negotiated to uh, bring that position current. No plans to do that. No. As far as you're concerned, okay. Right. Okay, and and the head systems analyst. Yes. Position? Any plan? Do you know of any plans, any interviews, or anything going out for that, or is it just going to stay vacant? Uh, I'm not sure what you're. You, Oh, the DPW. It's on the yes. head systems analyst. Right. That's what I'm. That's what the uh, request is for, for a DPW. Oh, that, oh, that one will cover that's that. That's the head analyst. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Farwell. Uh, good evening. Just a, a quick question. Uh, your very your system is very proactive to weed out spam that comes in over the email system. Obviously, there have been a lot of hacks lately that have gone into various databases from department stores to, to other entities that store a lot of personal information. Um, are we where we should be in terms of the firewall to, present, to prevent hacking and, and losing any data or having anyone's data compromised? Well, we do believe we are, and we've also engaged with a company called Sage through Wally Computer, and Sage is one of the largest uh, intrusion detection and prevention companies out there and uh, we're uh, just getting a quote from them right now and they're going to do penetration testing and of our firewalls and, and uh, things of that nature to see if they can break into our system and then tell us what we should do to correct it if they can. So it, it's safe to say that that's always an ongoing it process. is. Yeah. Once a year we evaluate if we change any equipment, we, we uh, have this evaluation done. And this was done through a, an audit um, uh, that was done through the auditor's office and, and it was a recommendation, but we do it every year anyhow. All right. My last question involves something that a vendor in the city spoke to me about during the campaign, and that is that if, if, if we request goods or services from someone we can't give them a purchase order so that w they can call in and then ask when we expect payment. Uh, my purchase order is PO1234 and uh, can you tell me if the check has been cut or if the check is coming out? And we had an accounts committee meeting and there was something about, uh, and obviously some people have read-only access to information which is perfectly understandable, but could we ever get to a system where there'd be a master index of purchase orders and a vendor could get that purchase order that would stay with them yes. and then they would be able to track everything until they receive final payment? Yes, I, I don't know uh, if the system would allow them to track it from start to finish, but um, we are looking at with the auditor's office and, and a few other offices uh, to be able to have the vendor log in and just see if it was paid out. I don't know that it it would show the whole process of tracking, you know, if it's in the auditor's office or it's been signed or it's been cut. I don't know if it goes uh, that granular. Uh, I could look into that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? And I'd just like to make a statement. I appreciate your help uh, earlier in the year. I know there had been some, some glitches on posting on the website uh, the, uh, all the public meetings, and I appreciate if you can make sure your staff stays on top of that because it is, it's an issue that, uh, it's a legal issue. So thank you for your help getting those yeah. done and, sure. and uh, in a timely manner and we want to stay on top of that. Uh, thank you very much.
Uh, item number eight. Procurement, Michael Morris, CPO. Uh, I think he didn't realize we'd be moving this quickly. Why don't we move that to uh, later in the uh, agenda and we'll go to number nine. Emergency Management, Stephen Hook, Director. Good evening, Mr. Hook. Good evening, Councils. I just have a prepared statement that I'd like to read. Um, first, I would like to thank the Emergency Management staff, volunteers, and the other city departments that provide assistance to my department on an ongoing basis. For the new councilors, the Emergency Management Agency is a part-time agency charged with ensuring the city is prepared to respond to and recover from all types of emergencies and disasters at a moment's notice. Over the past year, we have made a significant investment into operational equipment and technology in the Emergency Operations Center. Today, we now have the ability to communicate <clears throat> with local, state, and federal officials. We have the ability to receive live situational awareness updates for ongoing incidents statewide and we have increased our telephone capacity into the BEMA office to serve as a call center during emergencies. Working with the IT department, we have established an emergency notification system for employees. For the first time, employees can be notified of a significant event at a moment's notice via telephone, email, and text message. BEMA has also conducted several training events over the past year to educate our community <coughs> emergency response team and general public on uh, first aid, basic search and rescue, shelter operations, to name a few. And we've participated in several community events. My FY17 budget will allow BEMA to maintain the level of service we provide today. And uh, thank you for your support and consideration. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Councilor Barnes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hook. Um, you mentioned that um, you've had several trainings for the community and you, you do those CERT classes and people get uh, certified to be assistants, I guess, in the emergency management program. Yep. Um, where, where is that in the budget that that program is, is under? Like, how does, that, how does that fund? There's no line item for the CERT team. Okay, so who pays for, for all the materials? Because they get a book bag full of materials and is it like grants or? Usually it's grant funding or a lot of it's free through the federal government. Okay, okay. All right, great. I just want to make sure that those continue because I, I know a lot of people really, um, they, they've learned a lot from it and it also helps to support your, um, your office in the community. So Yes, thank right. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Razak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to... Um, Cong congratulate Mr. Hook on doing a wonderful job. I got a chance to visit the office and it looks really beautiful and up to date. So um, you do, it's, uh, it's looking good. So I hope everything, I know you, were, you got some equipment in there, some new equipment over this past year. So um, I don't know if you have any plans, if you need anything else. If, um, I, look, I mean, I don't see anything in the budget, but I don't know if there's anything that you're looking to add to the office, or is there anything in particular that you're looking to get in there? Yeah, we're still in the process of uh, upgrading, adding to the Emergency Operations Center. A lot of that stuff is grant funding. Uh, what comes out of the budget is to maintain that equipment, basically. But great job. It looks well, really Thank good. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Hook. How are you? Good evening. Good, thank you. I, I just had a quick question relative to, um, I see that the, uh, there's a vacant funded uh, position relative to the communications director, but what I was trying to figure out is the request for the stipend um, was 29628, and the mayor recommended 5711. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you just explain to us the, what, what that is, why that difference, and what it's going to be used for? I believe that uh, that's ordinance, uh, the upcoming ordinance change proposal. Oh, that's the buffer in there? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thanks for the job you do. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to number eight, please. Procurement, Michael Morris, CPO. Good evening, Mr. Morris. Good evening. Do you have a statement? Uh, um, the procurement uh, department budget is very small. Uh, it's mostly made up of personal services with approximately $6,000 uh, for the purchase of goods, services, and supplies. And with that, I'll take any questions. Mm -hmm. Councils? 
Thank you very much, Ms. Morris. Thank you Thank for you. the job you do. Yeah, sorry for I'm being late. No problem. <laughs> Item number 10. Fire, Michael Williams, Chief. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Council. Is this your first full budget, or did you do last year's? Second. I did last year's. Yeah. You did. After about a month in office. Yeah. <laughs> now you understand the budget. Sure. <laughs> you have a statement? Just that, again, this year I'd like to thank my administrative staff who helped me through the budget process. Um, also, all the men and women of my department who have made my first full year as chief uh, very rewarding. Thank you. Um, this year's budget, the ordinary maintenance side of the budget is level funded. Uh, the personal services side, um, there was a few line items, adjustments, um, some changes that we made. Um, we were asked by the city to look for some areas where possible we could make some cuts. Uh, we did do that. Uh, you probably noticed it in the in the budget itself. Councils? Councils Fowler. Uh, good evening, Chief. Good evening, Council. Uh, Chief, I understand that this year we will be doing what apparently we did last year, and that's an east side fire station will be uh, closed. And, uh, uh, and I understand the budget restrictions, but just for the rest of us, explain how that's going to work a little bit. And Sure. Technically, the station itself is not being closed. Uh, that's a two-company station. Um, in recent years, we had to close one of the companies Okay. due to some budget constraints and that's the, the one company is at that station that we we feel um, least affects the operations of the department okay and given the nature of the calls that particular company will not have a, a serious detrimental effect on our operations and I certainly hope so council the, the last year and I believe the year before um, because of the fact that we were short a ladder company I had two engine companies over there so closing one of them, it really didn't make a difference. This year, we're going to analyze whether we're going to close the, the engine company or the ladder company, and we will have to decide that before the end of the month. Okay. Well, if suddenly a rosy picture arrives, hopefully you and the mayor might, before the end of the three-month period, come up with a, an alternative solution. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors? Uh, thank you very much, Chief, and uh, thank you for the job you do. Thank, thank you, you very man. much. Item number 11. Law, Philip Nazarella, solicitor. Good evening, Attorney. Good evening. Uh, I do not have a statement, but I do like to extend the, my appreciation to the Council for their support of the Law Department throughout the year. Uh, due to the nature of large municipalities, the demands of the Law Department are increased at an annual basis. Uh, however, we have been very fortunate to have extremely talented assistant solicitors and support staff. So, but I do thank the, um, the Council and the individual members that I've had contact and ex in, in exchange with for their support and appreciation of what we do. Thank you, Attorney. Council Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Attorney Nazarell. I, I just want to thank you for what you do. I mean, I, I, I've said this many times. Um, the, the attorneys that work for the city, first of all, you're overworked and understaffed. And being an attorney myself, I understand the nuances. I mean, they're dealing with various, various areas of the law. And, uh, and a lot of it's kept in-house, which saves the taxpayers' money. So That's correct. I want to thank you for what you do, and if you could please share it with the assistant solicitors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Counselors? Thank you very much, thank Attorney Nazarello. Item number 12. Police, John Crowley, Chief. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. You have a statement? Just like to take this opportunity to thank the men and women of the Brockton Police Department for their hard work that they do every day to make this city a safer and better place. Councilors? Council Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good evening. I'm well, thank you. I, too, want to echo those sentiments of the, uh, the men and women that serve, and, and thank you for what you do. Um, last year, uh, you had requested um, 
a certain amount of money for overtime. Yes. And, and the mayor's uh, recommendation was actually about a hundred grand more than that. And then subsequently, uh, a subsequent appropriation needed to be done. Um, this year, it looks like it's the reverse. It was about a hundred thousand dollars less on the mayor's recommendation. And I asked this question to you last year, Chief, and I'm going to ask it again. I, are you feeling very comfortable that that number is going to be able to fulfill the whole fiscal year? As last year, I, I hope so. I mean, sometimes unpredicted circumstances come up that are out of our control. Um, but I anticipate this year we came back once, but it wasn't for an additional appropriation. It was for a transfer from salaries to overtime. Um, which was used for the same thing, though. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, see, my only question was, was I, I would thought that it would be contained due to the fact that we're going to have much more state police presence with the DA's office and, and that, and I just, and it's a great collaboration between Brockton PD and the Stadies. So I was just hopeful that, that that's a hard number, and uh, I mean, you answered my question, so thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Farwell. Uh, good evening, Chief. Evening. I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, 150000 is allocated for new police cruisers. Yes. The reality is that's probably going to buy only, what, four units, if we're lucky? Right. Uh, in the past few years, we haven't put anything in the budget for that. Um, this year, we chose to do it in the hopes that we would get it and try to, on a continuous basis every year, ask for the same so we completely com continue to upgrade our fleet every year. All right. Well, again, I know the budget constraints that face the city, and I know how hard the mayor works to try to allocate resources, but it, it would be fair to say for the rest of the councillors to understand we're in serious need of more than four new cruisers. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement, sir. All right. The other question I have, and again, I've spoken to the mayor about this, uh, the Motorola radios. I, I, I believe most of them were purchased I hate to say it, when I was there, um, and consequently, I think the software and the, the Motorola, uh, much like uh, Windows operating systems, they've stopped making either parts or software to upgrade them. So we really do need a system-wide upgrade in our radio system. Am I correct? At some point, we will. Um, we got a, an estimate to do it. It was in the million-dollar range. We don't see that feasible at this time. It's easier for us to do them as we need them at this time. Okay, but the day I, is going to come that we are going to have to request that. I, and forgive me, but uh, is it possible to do it piecemeal? I mean, will the will one set of Motorola radios integrate with the others? Yes. If we, they will. And I, I should have picked up on it, but is there something in this budget to start replacing some units, at least for the new recruits that are coming on? or? We have radios for the new recruits as they come on, and those will be purchased as we go. Um, okay. We're rotating the older ones that are currently in, but we're usable, and we'll rotate them through. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Barnes. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Hi, Chief. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Good. Um, so hypothetically, if the city were to accept a new state-of-the-art technology for the state of Massachusetts, where would that come under, under the budget? Because I'm looking under the goods and supplies, and I'm not really seeing any kind of, uh, f uh, kind of what um, Councilor Farrell just said about like a technology upgrade or anything. Where would that be if that were to be the case? How would that happen? We have one officer assigned to our uh, computers, but through the IT department, we have dedicated employees there. To, our primary job is the police and fire. Okay, so any kind of in-house technology upgrades would come from IT to... Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor? Uh, Chief, I'd like to thank you, too, and, and your men. Uh, it, it's been... Uh, as the newspapers uh, pointed out recently, we've had a good stretch that uh, so much of the work is from the cooperation of your department with other departments, and uh, I know just this week you've taken quite a few uh, drugs off the street, and I appreciate that on behalf of the council. Other than that, we all done, councillors? Thank you very much, Chief. And thank you. Thank you, councillors. Number 17. Finance, John Condon, CFO. Good evening, Good evening, Mr. Condon. I guess I'll ask you, ask the same question. How many is this for you? Uh, this is my 26th budget. 26th budget? Yep, 26. The quickest one, too. 
This has been very quick, yeah. I, I like this budget. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's a statement on how little there is to cut. I, I think uh, but that's also, probably I'd true. like to take this opportunity to say, prior to this council, I think it's a uh, statement on how much work and homework all this council has done ahead of time to get answers uh, to their questions. And uh, I appreciate all the work of the councilors prior to the meetings to, uh, to be prepared for this uh, budget, budget hearing. So thank you. And now, do you have a statement? Uh, I, I think that shows the homework. It has been very, uh, very efficient. Yeah, I have a, just a couple of statements. Uh, the first is that the uh, Finance Department for many years took over the uh, city's insurances, uh, property casualty insurance from the law department. Uh, now that we've beefed up the law department uh, legal staff somewhat, that budget is no longer in finance. It's in the law department budget. So that's the same amount of money, but it's just in a different department. I think it's probably a more appropriate place for it to be coordinated with the, the risk assessment with, with, with the law department. Uh, the second is that um, this budget contains a uh, filled position that wasn't filled last year in my office, and that's for Tiffany Botello. She's serving as a junior financial analyst. So we're back up to three, uh, three analytical pos positions, including mine. And other than that, I'd take any questions. Council Sullivan. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Connor. Good evening. How are you? Well, thank you. I, I, I only had two quick questions on this, Jay. Um, relative to the line item on the consultant, Yes. You had requested a little about 117, 500. The mayor came in about 15 grand more than that, 132, 500. And then if I look at the history, uh, in 2016 the hard number was almost 189,000, yes. and the previous year was about 85 grand. Yes. Could you just explain to us, Mr. Conan, um, first of all, what what that line item is, and and why the $15,000 increase? Yes, there are two two pieces to that. Uh, the first is the uh, city uh, collects uh, for. Um, it's um, Medicaid uh, el eligible uh, special education students, uh, a reimbursement from the state. And we gain that through a contract which is paid for out of uh, my office. And it's on a contingent fee basis. They get a percentage of what they collect. And um, the state's been a little bit tighter on how much they've granted in the past few years. And that's why that is the first budget request was down. The second piece is the city applied for a grant from the state. Uh, there's a grant match on that, which is worth 15000 That came in after the budget was created, so we added it at the mayor's level. And the purpose of that grant is to help the city to prepare some financial policies. As you know, I've, I'm, I've got a couple years to go in this term and hope to be around for a while, but I won't be here forever, and I thought it would be a good idea for the city to have financial policies to bring to the city council to have you involved in that. And most of it will be paid for by a grant, but there was a match. Okay. And my, I actually have two questions more. Um, the last one is relative to the electrical power line item. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's expensive, right? 820000 was your request. May came in 14000 more. Um, again, if you could just explain. That. Yes, well, that line, um, the city has these solar contracts. It's not the bright field where we're selling the power yep. directly into the grid, but we have, I think, four or five uh, uh, solar developments outside the city where the city obtains a reduction in our national grid electric rates for specific city meters. So the benefit of those reductions on the national grid bills are showing in the department budgets. but. We also have to pay for the solar output. So there's anywhere from a 10 to 15 percent savings after the two are equated, and that's what that line pay, pays for. That bill for the solar companies is paid out of my budget. Okay, great. And my last question, if you could just give me a little um, leniency on this, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, the, the mayor stated um, both during the budget and also when we had an ordinance meeting that there's a buffer in there yes. relative to a pending matter of yes. potential raises. I guess my question would be is that if, if that doesn't come to fruition, meaning the Ordinance Committee doesn't pass it and ratified by the Council, does the money that's in there, that 5% that buffer or whatever that percentage is, is that just going to stay department-wide or would that be transferred into the general fund? Well, at, at the moment it would stay inside the budgets where it's allocated. Uh, it couldn't be spent because those are ordinance salaries and so we can't spend any more than the ordinance allows us to spend on those salaries. And the amount in any single budget except for a couple isn't great enough to say hire another person that isn't an ordinance person. But at the end of the day, when we see what emerges from the, uh, from the ordinance uh, committee, it would be possible to go through all these budgets and come back to the city council if there's not going to be any increase or a lesser increase and take those dollars that aren't needed and remove them by transfer and put them into the stable. From each department. specific department into yes. the general? And, yes. and the, when the DOI, when the Department of Revenue certifies 
that would be okay. Yeah, well, either either way is okay. It's it, it's it's okay as it exists because we can't spend more than is uh, than is authorized by the ordinance. Yep. And if it's the council's desire, you know, we can go through and do the mathematics to figure out what's surplus in each one of those accounts, and uh, ask for a re, uh, reduction in, or a transfer from those budgets to stabilization after the budget's passed in the summer. Excellent. Time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening. Um, I have a, just a couple of questions. Um, where in the budget do we find income that's come into the city? For example, the rental of some of the offices in City Hall. I know I asked a similar question the other night, and you said that it's in the um, in the mayor's. Uh, it was in the mayor's budget. So there, I was there, are, there are two answers to that question, Council. The first is uh, the city has about 20 revolving funds, mm -hmm. um, and some of those dollars would show up in the revolving funds that the city council has authorized. Uh, the um, uh, War Memorial has a revolving fund. There's a revolving fund for the cemeteries department for, for grave liners. So those dollars, if they weren't in revolving funds, would be general fund receipts. But instead, the city council has chosen to segregate them so they aren't general fund receipts. They're restricted and can be spent only for the purpose that's stated in the order for the revolving fund. So uh, when that um, request came to council, there was a report attached to each one of those that shows how much was taken in the last year for each fund and how much was spent to the designated purpose and what the balance was at, uh, around May 15th. We can get uh, new copies of those reports to you. And in fact, you'll be getting that anyway because I think there were three revolving funds, small ones, where the departments forgot to send the request into us. So that'll be coming in for your June meeting. And when you see that June request, I think there are, like I said, three, that report will be attached to each one of those at that time. So that's one source. Uh, the second source is either the utility revenues, uh, you mean the enterprise fund revenues, or the general fund revenues, and, and those are in this uh, this little book. Um, okay. There's a revenue section in that book. So it's under revenue revenue section. And it, it kind of looks like that. So there's um, uh, you can see how much is coming in from the cherry sheet, how much is estimated for the tax levy, how much is estimated for local general fund receipts that aren't the tax levy or the cherry sheet, the revenue estimates for each one of the enterprise funds. And then a final thing is what we call available funds. You're basically reserves. They're not estimated, but you appropriate specifically from those funds. Parking authority receipts are one of those. Um, free cash is one of those. The overlay surplus that the mayor mentioned the other night that went to capital. Those are all in this book behind my letter and the mayor's letter, behind the actual budget order. It's this, what, what we call in my office, the first, the forecaster, and the first pages of that are the general fund and the back pages are the enterprise funds. Mm -hmm. So in those other sewer contracts, for example, like Stonehill and um, the Abington, are they in there also? or The amounts associated with those, but not specifically. They're aggregated to a, a, a rev for example, for the sewer budget, there are two revenue line items that are shown in that little book. Uh, one is for the sewer revenues, so the Stonehill contract or the Abington contract would be in there if you're interested in the specific amount uh, that was received last year, which would be the basis for next year's budget. We can get you that. And then second line is well, each of these have what's called retained earnings. It's kind of like free cash, but for the enterprise funds, and that's the second revenue for the enterprise funds, their own revenues plus the free cash or retained earnings. That would be great if we, if I could, if we could get that information. I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, I want to thank you, Mr. Condon. Uh, uh, that finishes our departments. Uh, and actually, I want to just uh, speak about what I spoke about a minute ago. I really want to thank all of you, councillors. I think you did great homework. I think the budget reflects a true spirit of cooperation from the mayor's office and Mr. Condon with the, with the thought process of the council. I think some of the things that are in the budget reflected the, the will of the council at the same time. So uh, we're going to take a brief recess while, uh, council, you can take a look and uh, see what uh, cuts you'd like to make. We're back in session. Uh, council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to hereby move uh, to reduce from the budget from the Parking Authority Department personnel services other than overtime account by $64,700. Okay. The appropriation in that account is reduced from 446492 to 381792 Second. Motion made and seconded to cut 64000 uh, as stated from the Parking Authority budget. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. 
Recommended favorably. Councilor Lally. Mr. Chairman, I hereby move to reduce from the Treasurer's Debt Department uh, interest on short-term notice account by 200000 The appropriation in that account is reduced from $14,517,776 to $14,317,776. Uh, $14, Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to cut Treasurer's debt service by $200,000 as stated. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably. Anyone else? Councilor Farwell. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to move to reduce the police department personal services other than overtime by $90,000. That will reduce the appropriation from $20,978,009 to $20,888,009, and I'd like to speak briefly on that matter. Second. I believe you mean $20 million. Uh, $20 million, yes. Yes. Thank you. You may speak on your motion. I think most of you know that the, the men and women at 7 Commercial Street hold a special place in my heart, and I, I have to applaud the mayor for being very forward-thinking in what he is trying to do with the police department, particularly with the crime analyst. I think that is something that's long overdue. However, when I campaigned for this office, I promised that I would focus on public safety services and at this time, until we continue to increase the number of uniformed or sworn personnel, I think it's important to put this type of funding into enforcement people, not to make arrests, as my colleague Councillor Rodriguez has said so many times. You don't arrest your way out of public safety challenges, but you do try to have as many officers, men and women, uh, on the force who can do preventative patrol. The other reason is that I think the crime analyst should have some time to get acclimated to the city and start crunching those numbers and come up with some hard recommendations as to what personnel we need, where we need them, what hours of the day, what sections of the city, and it may very well be that this $90,000 could later on be appropriated for a different use. And the last reason is that we already have a director of communications in the mayor's office. We have one on the school side. Um, I just don't feel comfortable taking that kind of money and establishing a position like that. And while I applaud the mayor and I agree with him totally that we need community outreach, you know what? Every man and woman on the police department should be involved in community outreach. The most important thing you do as a law enforcement officer is treat people with respect, earn their respect and their support so that you can do your job. So for all of those reasons, that's why I've made this motion. Motion has been made and seconded to cut uh, police other than overtime by $90,000. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. I have, yes, I have one more, and I'm not going to be redundant on my earlier remarks about my, my support for the police department. But on the overtime appropriation, I'm going to move that we reduce that by $250,000, which will bring it from 1,020,552 to 770,552. And it's not because I don't think the police department may need the money. I just think it's better to hold that money in abeyance, and when they need to come back to us and they need the additional overtime, we find out what it's for, we make sure it's justified, and I think that's what we as councillors do when we work with the mayor to be stewards of the finances of the city and to protect the taxpayers' uh, interests. So uh, that is the motion. Second. Motion made and seconded to cut police overtime by $250,000 as, uh, as carried with the final amounts. Uh, anybody? All those in favor? All those against? Motion carries. Recommended favorably. Any other recommended cuts? Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I hereby move to reduce from the law department in the category of law purchase of service the amount of $150,000, the appropriation is in the account, the appropriation is therefore reduced from $300,000 to $150,000.
And if I could uh, just uh, speak on that for two seconds. You may, the motion has been made and seconded. You may speak on your motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the reason why I'm actually uh, submitting this particular cut is because when you look at the law department's budget, uh, looking back in 2015, the full-time salary for that department was $270,000. It has now grown to $611,000 for full-time um, salaries. The legal um, uh, budget amount was $600,000, and I think it's only fair that that too should be, shall be reduced, and therefore that's why I'm submitting that reduction to $150,000. Motion made and seconded to cut, uh, excuse me, hold on a second. We'll be in a brief recess. <coughs> We're back in session. Uh, Councillor Rodriguez, did you want to withdraw your motion and re restate? Well, I will withdraw and then re uh, re restate it again. That motion is withdrawn. Now, your new motion. Uh, well, I hereby move to reduce from the law department in the law purchase of service account by 185799 the appropriation in the account is reduced from 335,799 to 150,000. Second. Motion made and seconded to reduce law or office uh, purchase of services by $185,799. Uh, just a point of information, it, it, whomever could answer this. Is this what's used to hire outside counsel for specialized cases? Is that still what that line item is about? That would be generally, generally the, yes. Okay. Okay. I, the only thing I would say to my colleague is that sometimes those, those services are, are needed because of all of the different types of cases that are, that are heard uh, or that have to be litigated by the city. And I, uh, I wish the solicitor were here. But. Well, you know, to, through the chair. Uh, for the same reason that you stated a few minutes ago in terms of why you're reducing the police department, that they can always come back and ask for additional funds, this is the reason why I'm doing this. That, that, that's a reasonable one. Thank you. And, we have, and since now we have quite a few, of full, um, like, as, I state, uh, as I stated earlier, that the full-time uh, budget went from $270,000 to $600,000. So we've got a lot more staff and bodies to handle a lot of the... Uh, the legal issues in the city, I think it's only fair since we're cutting all over the place that this too shall be reduced. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion made and seconded to cut uh, law office purchase of services by 185799 All those in favor? All those opposed? That, is, uh, that does not carry. Uh, any other cuts? Councilor Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to cut from the mayor's budget under the business and economic development $25,000, reducing it for 150000 to 125. And if I could just speak on that, I'm very excited that the mayor has come before us and a decision to begin working to, uh, how would I say it, um, remobilize um, the economic development for this city. But in the same token, I wish that we would um, be begin to start working on this um, sooner and more closely for the betterment of the community so maybe we won't have so many challenges in the future with our budgets. Thank you. Do I hear a second on that motion? I'll do a second for purpose of voting. Motion made and seconded to cut Mayor's uh, business and economic development by $25,000. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. Motion does not carry. Any other, any other cuts, councillors? No. We'll give Mr. Gilday a second, mm -hmm. and then we'll. Uh... 
We'll be in a brief recess. We're back in session. Mr. Council, Chairman. Council Sullivan. I'm going to make a motion to accept the budget as amended. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the budget as amended. We will now vote department by department. Questions on favorably recommending the budget for the Conservation Commission. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Recommended favorably. Questions on favorably recommending the budget for the Board of Health. All those in favor? Opposed? Questions on favorably recommending the DPW water budget. All those in favor? Opposed? Council's question now is uh, favorable recommending the budget for personnel department. All in favor of that? All opposed? It carries. Question now, Council is, is on a favorably recommending the budget for the school department. All in favor of that? All opposed? Motion carries. Question is on favorably recommending the budget as amended. All those in favor? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? This is on the budget as a whole, as amended. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I'd like to see, uh, like we've done in past practice, uh, a roll call vote on that, if you don't mind. Motion has been requested for a roll call vote. Second. Like Question is on favorably recommending the budget as amended. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, will you call the roll? Oh, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Ian Beauregard. Yes. Dennis Iernary. Yes. Shana Barnes? No. Moses Rodriguez? No. Shirley Azak? Yes. Tom Monaghan? Yes. Jack Lally? Yes. Robert Sullivan? Yes. Wynn Farrell? Yes. And Paul Studensky? Yes. And me. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cruz. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail. Second. Second. That won't be tonight. That'll be at oh, the uh, oh, final. Right. This is uh, the recommended. This is recommended budget uh, for finance. So, uh, councilors, you have in front of you. You've all been not uh, served notice. Yeah. <laughs> I hereby call a special meeting of the City Council for the City of Brockton to be held in Council Chambers on Monday evening. June 13th, 2016, at 6.30 p.m., in accordance with the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Section 2-26. The subject to be acted upon as follows. The agenda will be the fiscal year 17 budget and all other council-related matters that may be come before us. This is to allow the uh, Finance Department's time after we accept the budget, or not, to, uh, to do what paperwork they have to uh, work with the Department of Revenue. So Monday night, we will have fine, uh, excuse me, full City Council Sure. at 6.30, and then we will uh, not have a finance meeting uh, the next week, and we'll have our regular council meeting on the 27th. Mr. Council Chairman, I, I want to, uh, on behalf of the full council finance committee, I want to thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, a lot of us have been on here for over 10 years now, and this was the smoothest budget, and I, and I want to thank you for all your efforts on this, and, uh, and my colleagues as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor, very much. And I want to thank all of the councilors, the mayor, Mr. Condon, all the department heads, uh, uh, in tough fiscal times, I think we uh, did a responsible and a good budget. And again, uh, I want to reiterate, I'm very proud of this council for the work they did, uh, the homework they did ahead of time, and the uh, very intelligent and uh, pointed questions that were asked. Anything else? We're adjourned.